Welcome to our review on covalent bonding. So the first thing we're going to consider are these things called simple molecules. Now simple molecules are quite simply ones that only contain a very small number of atoms. So these are things like carbon dioxide, water and oxygen. Now what we actually find is that a molecule is a particle where non-metal atoms are being joined by a covalent bond. So what do we mean when we talk about this thing called a covalent bond? This is different to our ionic bond in the fact that it's going to form between two non-metal atoms. Ionic bonds will always form between a metal and a non-metal, but covalent bonds always two non-metal atoms. And a covalent bond itself is a shared pair of electrons. So this is what we see forming between two atoms of hydrogen, for example, to make the hydrogen molecule. One thing we need to be able to do is draw dot and cross diagrams for covalent bonding. Now, one thing you'll notice is a key difference between the dot and cross diagrams for covalent bonding and the dot and cross diagrams we drew for ionic bonding is that we're only using the outer shell here. You don't have to draw all the inner shells when we're talking about covalent bonding, but you do with ionic bonding. So if we look at the top left diagram, first of all, we've got two hydrogens which have been joined together by a covalent bond. One always has to be dots, the other always crosses, remember. So what we've got in hydrogen is a single electron, and so they're going to share that single electron between them to make that pair. So make sure that your little orbitals overlap and then you put your electrons between them as shown in that top diagram. Middle diagram, we can see water there. So we've got two hydrogens with one electron each represented by the blue crosses. And then oxygen has six electrons, which are the red circles or the dots. So one electron has to be shared with each of the hydrogens. That gives that hydrogen its full outer shell feeling. So it's got two there, which is the outer shell being full. And then oxygen has all of the electrons it needs because it's got the additional two from hydrogen, to take it up to eight. The last one at the very bottom left there is just showing you oxygen because it's not just a single pair of electrons that can be shared between two atoms. We can actually share multiple pairs. So in the case of two oxygen atoms joining together, they share two pairs of electrons between them as shown in that diagram. Now, when we're talking about a covalent bond, they are still electrostatic forces of attraction between the atoms. It's between the nucleus of each bonded atom and the shared electron in this case, though. Now, covalent bonds are still strong bonds, but what we find is that even though the bonds holding those individual atoms together are strong, the forces that actually hold the molecules together, those intermolecular forces, those are quite weak. So when we're looking to see why these simple molecules like water, like oxygen, etc., are very easy to turn into their gases, it's because they've only got weak intermolecular forces. But the reason that the actual atoms don't come apart very easily within the molecule is because the covalent bonds are strong. There are a few different models we can use to represent this bonding within our molecules. The first one is what's called a ball and stick model. So this is the kind of thing you may have played around with if you had the Molly Mod kits in class and got to build different molecules. There are some limitations to this, though. The first one is that the size of the atoms and the length of the bonds are very much exaggerated. And it does suggest that electrons making the bond don't move because obviously we're using rigid bits of plastic to actually hold them in place. So there are some limitations to this, but it does actually show the general structure of our actual molecule. The second model we can use is one called the displayed formula. So this is quite simply where you're going to use the symbol and then just draw a line to represent the bond between those different atoms. The big downside to this one is that it doesn't show the three dimensional shape of the molecule. You're literally just writing it on a page and drawing some lines to show it. So obviously it doesn't give you the idea of how it actually sits in three dimensions. The last thing we need to look at is this idea of giant covalent structures. Now, a giant covalent structure just consists of many non-metal atoms that have been joined together by covalent bonds that are arranged in this regular repeating pattern, which is our giant lattice. A couple of examples where we'd see this are in diamond and in silica. 
and I've given you the diagram of silica in the bottom left there so you can see it. Now, as the name suggests, these are giant structures. So if we were to try to write the formula for them, we wouldn't want to be writing the actual numbers of each atom present. So instead, what we do is we use the empirical formula. So in the case of silica, we wouldn't be counting up every silicon and every oxygen atom to actually give us the numbers. We would just write it as the empirical formula of Si2O. Hopefully by the end of this video, you do know what simple molecules are. We know what a covalent bond is and where they actually form. You should be able to draw dot and cross diagrams to represent covalent bonding and recall the fact that these are strong bonds. You should also be able to recall the different types of models that we use to show the structures and their limitations, as well as what a giant covalent structure actually is.